I want you all to put on your slightly imaginary wellies. Are they on? Give your toes a wiggle. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. And we are going to go rock all day. Imagine you're somewhere at the beach, maybe some of you are with kids or somewhere, very nice and warm. And we're walking along and looking at the multicoloured seaweeds. Go on, don't slip as we reach into a rock pool and pick up a rock. Now at the bottom of this rock is some awesome sea creatures. We're talking barnacles, and then it is seaweeds. And they all started their life off though as that tiny little bit of larvae that was floating through the ocean until it settled and metamorphosized like a caterpillar into a butterfly, except for when these turned into adults, they would never move from that spot again. Now excuse me as I wrench you from your own memories, and I'm gonna plop you in one of mine. Instead of exploring a rocky shore, we are exploring a sunken shipwreck at low tide. Now this ship is made of metal and was left during the world wars, but now nature has taken over and it is full of slippery, slimy and squelchy sea life. And if we look a little bit closer, you'll start to notice that some of the species you saw in your own rock pools aren't on this ship and some of your favourite species are missing. Well that's because if you live in one place for your entire life, you're going to be fussy. And at this tiny little microscopic stage you can't even see with your eyes, this species that I've shown in my research and others is that they have preferences. They can tell if it's metal or rock, if it's rough or smooth, what chemicals are on the surface, and of course, they have favourites. Now because sea life can also live on man-made surfaces, it comes with a bit of a problem. Some species decide to live on the bottom of ships, hitchhike around the world, and get introduced to new environments like our native rock shores. The problem with this is that because they're new, they don't often play ball or very nice with our native species, and they can threaten our rock pooling friends. So is there a way that we can help our lovely rock pooling pals? Well, I love wearing hats, as you can see, but I also wear a lot of hats in my job. I'm a marine biologist, I'm an engineer, and now I am a real estate agent to the rock pooling world, because I'm attempting to make new materials, new homes that we put in our seas, like in our harbors that are made with the material properties that those hitchhikers don't like, but our native species do like. What I find really funny is that I spent my days as a kid being curious about what grew on the bottom of ships, and my adult life is spent much the same, except for now, I drink a lot more coffee, and uh, what I do in my day job, that helps what I notice and see as a as a kid, that helps actually shape and protect the rock-pooling creatures I love so much. Thank you.